Africa is a continent rich with opportunity. And when business and communities come together, its astonishing potential begins to be felt. With the Sustainable Development Goals steering these partnerships, Africa's future is being rewritten with innovation, foresight and inclusivity. Crossing the length and breadth of the continent, our journalists uncover these stories and share them with the world. Join us now for remarkable stories of partnerships across Africa, building the future and changing lives. It's Africa's time. This is Luanda today, the capital of Angola, the second largest oil producer in Africa. With a large proportion of the country's 25 million people being under the age of 20, it's education and training that are key to the country's long-term success. Maersk Angola is tapping into the country's youthful energy and helping ensure development through job creation and the upskilling of young Angolans. But progress is all about people's stories, and I've come here to meet three Angolans who are living their dreams and have big plans for the future. We start with a remarkable young woman who is a graduate of Maersk Oil's technical graduate program, MITIS. This is Luzana's story. My name is Luzana Costa. I'm 26 years old, and I was born in Luanda, Angola. Grew up here until I was 13 when I moved to the US. There was a civil war going on at the time. It was thought best for the rest of my high school career and university career to move to the US. I studied geology at Temple University in Philadelphia and my master's in applied geosciences, most specifically groundwater hydrology. After that, moved back to Angola in search for a job and landed in MITIS. This is the Angolan coastline and it's divided into block concessions, so each block has a number. And currently, Maersk Oil holds block 16, which is where we did our exploration work and we found our Shisonga field. So what do you do? Um, currently, I'm writing a well prognosis, which is a blueprint for one of the wells that's going to be producing oil on, in block 16. Basically telling everyone, including the drillers, from a geological perspective, what your reservoir looks like. So you're a well prognostician. Sure. Lizana's a well prognostician. Geology is not just about rocks. It's, it's, it's not just about rocks, it's about the earth itself. It's about what makes the earth move and what's in the earth, how the earth is formed. The MITIS program is, is a graduate entry program for the MASS group. So we take engineers and geologists from, from different institutions uh, around the world. It's a two-year program where they work different places and do different jobs as well. So they get a real sense of what the oil industry is all about. When you come out from university, you typically don't know much about the industry. You know the technical part of the work, but not what the industry is about. So the reason for having this program is to make sure we can attract the, the right candidates and also to make sure that they actually get a good foundation for themselves to make the right choices for their career after the two years. I find Mitis to be special because you have three rotations of eight months each where you spend your time in a different country, a different location, doing a different job within your discipline. She was sent to Denmark uh, working in the Danish offshore activities uh, in the Copenhagen office and, and directing geology activities there. And from Denmark she went to the United States uh, being part of our exploration activities in, uh, in the United States. We had a module which was in Berkeley which basically was a master's in innovation in two weeks. So you have all these amazing people come in and telling you about what they do and how you can do it better. And at the end of it, you have to come up with a project for the company that is financially viable. I've been fortunate to be the mentor for Lusana, and I think we had some really, really interesting discussions. So the idea is, of course, as the, the project matures, we'll move more and more work into this direction. Yeah. So we need, of course, also people like you to be able to take on more senior obligations. Do you want to be more on the planning side or on the execution side? I think definitely more on the execution side. I want to be offshore. You want to be offshore? I definitely want to be offshore. There's no two ways around that one. You really want to see it at some point. You really want to see what it's about. 
Angola is an, an economy with a lot of private sector investment, the oil and gas, uh, the shipping, the trading, and these companies uh, can play a great role in um, tooling the Angolan youth so that they can also become um, service providers to these companies as well as managers of the future because the sustainability of any enterprise is also dependent on the indigenous capacities that are available. My mom is a caterer. She did her schooling in Portugal when she was younger and at at that time when I was young, she did mostly cakes. My mom baked a lot. She started uh, going full throttle on catering, like weddings and full-on parties. It worked really well because most parents were working from eight to five, and my mom could be with me the whole day. So like take me to music school and etc. So my mom was doing that for me while most parents couldn't. <laughs> A mãe podia estar matando uma galinha aqui na cozinha. E eu não ia ouvir. Não ia ouvir, estás no quarto. Não ia nem sequer ligar que a galinha está aqui a morrer. Então, estou aqui a fazer um refogado. Agora quero ver se vão aprender Mamãe, ou não a fazer um refogado. Quem não sabe fazer refogado também? Pois? Mamãe também. Daqui a uma semana, mãe, como é que eu faço refogado? <risos> my mom was solely devoted to my sister and I. So she worked for us. She, she was basically mom, dad, everyone, for my sister, myself, and for everyone in my family, really. I was two years old when my father died. I don't remember much of it, and I'm told only very small parts. He was shot outside of our house during a small conflict that was happening. There was a civil war going on in Angola, it lasted for 27 years. It affected every family, but me in particular, I lost my father during the time. I'm in a very international environment, and I know I have the opportunity to get up and do something else somewhere else. And I think sometimes it's not a lot of people in Angola think like this or have the opportunity to, to do this. What would make you happy? To do something meaningful. That would make me happy. exciting to have these young people who are actually interested in our, in our company and it's privileged that they're interested in our company as well. We need them. We need the young people to drive it forward. Luzanne is a fantastic individual. She's a very deeply thinking person. She thinks a lot about things and, and she actually thinks also a lot about how does she integrate her technical desires, her, her leadership desires and fulfills uh, to some degree, I think, also the family expectations. <laughs> you must be very proud of your daughters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The nurse group has been active for more than 100 years in Africa and uh, over the years we have grown to now have operations in more than 45 countries uh, all over the continent with more than 10,000 employees. We have two main themes of business. One is uh, within energy, oil and gas, uh, which is very obvious for Angola, but the other one is just as important as is infrastructure and transport, uh, covering ocean transport, uh, ports, inland facilities and logistics. And it's into the space that we travel with Paolo Giuliana, who's a cadet in training to be a ship's engineer. He lives in Luanda with his young family, but travels each month to Soyo at the mouth of the mighty Congo River in the north of the country, Cool Refinery. My name is Paolo Gabriel Giuliana. My time regular is normally 28 days on board of a navio. It's a dream that I always thought of as a marine. Isso é pela oportunidade que eu sei que a Civit fará isso por mim, de forma a acelerar mais a minha formação e depois ser o, o verdadeiro oficial, que é o engenheiro. Realmente, uh, muito antes de eu vir para aqui, eu já, já, já estava a trabalhar, eu já trabalhava, bem dizer, sempre seguindo a, a minha área, que é a área da engenharia, a especialidade é mecânica e engenharia. In 2011, Maersk sent Paolo and 70 other Angolans to learn basic seamanship on the Danish Maritime Authority's training ship, the Denmark. 
Their three-month Atlantic adventure took them from Lisbon to Copenhagen via Madeira and the Azores, with high seas and cold waters offering them invaluable seafaring experience, now put to good use in soil. The challenge here is the uh, Congo River, which is flowing at up to six knots. Uh, and turning into the Palulu Channel, there are a lot of unpredictable currents in the channel, off the berth, so that makes it a very challenging port in which to work. The tugs that we have here are a special 80-ton uh, bollard pull tug, specially designed for escort towage. We have to be able to steer the ship at certain high speeds. Each tug is probably around about $9 million in costs, so uh, it's a valuable piece of equipment. Switzer have uh, put a lot of money into this project and we will continue to put more money into it. We want to develop a, a good, high-quality seafarer that can work with, well with our, with our client and ultimately they can utilize their skills in the marine industry in the future. Paolo is one of our more mature seafarers. He has got previous seafaring experience. He's a very happy, cheerful sort of person. Mas eu sempre gosto desse trabalho porque o trabalho que eu de facto me encanta mesmo. I'd come all the way to Soyo to see Paolo in his workspace, and I wasn't going home without seeing what living conditions are like aboard one of the world's most powerful tugboats. Hello. Yeah, yeah. So this is where you live? Yes. Can I come in? You can. Please. Thank you. Yeah. 28 days on and 28 days off? Yeah. So this is home away from home? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. You've got your desk here and... Yeah, sometimes I can be here to watch my movies, so on. If I had to live in a place like this for 28 days, I would go loco. You will be able. I'd go loco. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the fact that family has been very important for me, because it's not easy to be here for a month without estar ao lado deles. Tenho sentido muito, mas que fazer o trabalho é a coisa mais importante. Realmente, uh, estando a trabalhar no mar não é coisa fácil, de facto. É a razão em que eu não deixo de esquecer de que este é o sonho, talvez é o meu destino, não é? E eu vou perseverar de forma a dar essa, a sequência nisso. Yeah. What the experts say. In order to build a company, you need to unlock potential, upskilling your most committed and promising employees to benefit not only your company but their lives as well. From graduates like geologist Luzana Costa to aspirant ships engineers like Paolo Giuliana, Mask Angola is developing its people into top notch professionals. When commitment meets with opportunity and training, a country can be transformed. We're now going to meet young cadets from Mask Supply Service whose lives are being impacted in profound ways by an extensive strategic training program that set them on the path to captaining a vessel one day. Well, my cara, when I was more small, I always saw the ships like this, but I never thought that someday I would work in the United States, you know? It's amazing. It's amazing. They say that it's basically our dream of children to get to a certain reality. It's amazing. É uma coisa diferente. Quando, quando entrei pela vez no navio, e yeah, ainda me lembro, me lembro quando tu me dizias como quando eras crianças, brincavas, com brincavas com, com barquinhos de papel a rodar, yeah. não sei o quê. Olha, eu acho, eu acho que. Yeah. Eu acho que aqui não vais brincar agora, aqui tu vais. Quer dizer, estaremos, né? Nesse caso, estaremos a, a comandar, a estar no comando. Nesse Seriamente, caso, né? não mais brincadeira. E aí é bonitinho saber Sim, que. Isso é encontrar, daqui aprender a... mais uhum. yeah, com, com os outros. Daqui a mais algumas semanas estarei nos dos navios da Maer que. 
é mesmo maravilhoso. Uau. Yeah, por aí. I met up with Deck Cadet Dario Timoteo in his home neighborhood on the outskirts of Luanda. I wanted to find out where he comes from and where he is headed in the future. So this is your school, primary and high? Yes, this is my school, my primary and high school. This is where I started, actually. Were well, you a good student? <laughs> my teacher says so and my colleague also says so. I'm a good student. It's a pretty nice school. I mean, the place that you grew up is... Very yeah. nice, green and leafy, yeah. huh? Quiet and good people as well. Yeah. yeah. It must have been hard to leave to go to Cape Town. Yeah, to study. it was just hard decision, but I had to do that. Hi, guys. Hi. What's up? Thank you. Hi. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. You know, you used to be my student here, right? This was actually my class. I was sitting in the front where this lady is sitting right now. And it was just, wow, you were a wonderful teacher. Do you know he's yeah. a wonderful teacher? What are you doing here? Well, uh, now I'm a cadet, guys. I work for Max Supply Service Vessel. Basically, what I do is I work on a big vessel, and a cadet must take care of all the navigation equipment, like a magnet compass, gyro compass, GPS, and uh, I must make sure that the ship is safe to navigate, and I must avoid all form of pollution because it must take care of our environment. So this is basically what I do, guys. I grew up in the city, in Viana Villa, and uh, I studied just nearby at Neve de Souza School. My father, uh, he's, a, he's a great father actually because he helped me a lot when I need him the most. My mother, he's 42 years old. She's also the best mom in the world, so she's always there when I need some help. When I need the children to, to lean, she's always there to help me. And my sister as well, they're a little bit stubborn, but okay, we get on very well. <laughs> yes, I have such a nice family, the best family in the world. You're growing up very fast. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, want... ah, you don't like it? I don't like this picture. Why? Why don't you look at picture? I look ugly. No, you look a fofinho, cute. <laughs> How old were you there? Uh, I was eight years old. Bem, quando era pequenino, gostava de brincar com barcos. Ele fazia barcos de papel e metia numa banheira e ficava ali a brincar. E também desenhava. Desenhava o mar e barcos. É, é aquele que gostava de brincar. When I was on high school, I thought that it would be nice if one day I work on the vessel. Then after I finished my high school, I saw the advertisement on a newspaper. Then I was like, wow, that's really wonderful. Then I applied for that, for my supply service. I thought that they will never call me again, but then my cell phone rang. I said, oh, they called me then. They said, okay, Dario, I think I have passed the test. Can you come for the interview, please? Então, quando saiu o nome do jornal que ele tinha que aparecer, a família toda ficou muito contente, a família toda. Fizemos festa. Ai, Dario, estás de parabéns, Dario, força. Ficamos muito felizes. Foi mesmo uma graça de Deus. Foi bom, muito bonito. Then I wait for one more month. They call me for medical exam. Then they told me to have my passport done. I did that. Then I fly to Cape Town. <laughs> I went to Cape Town to start my cadetship, and uh, what I did first was my English course. Then after six months, I started to do my university. And then we did a lot of stuff there, like a different course, like a personal surviving techniques. When we were uh, on the pool, we learned how to abandon the vessel, because if the vessel is on distress, and uh, we have to know how to abandon that. So we have to jump to the pool, and uh, you have to use her life jacket, then swim to the life raft, and then hope that a vessel passing by is going to come and rescue us. My name is Tim Wimbo Mushito Makanda. I call me Mac, because it's more simplified. I'm a de cadet. Talking about a very dear person, Dario. I know Dario at the time when we did the candidature, when we all went through the same interview. E a nossa amizade conclui, continuou e desenvolveu ainda mais quando fomos para, para a universidade. Isto é em Cap Peninsula University of Technology, em Cape Town. Right. Four of you come around. Mike was like one of my best friends because we are always together. He's always there to help me when I'm in some kind of trouble. 
Yeah. Yeah, eu amigo de verdade. Eu amigo. Eu amigo de verdade. E yeah, aí eu tenho para dizer isso. Apenas tenho que agradecer por conhecer ela. E yeah, aí, enfim. Fantastic. He's a good guy. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a good guy. Very good guy. <laughs> Eight forty-seven point five, okay. and then you uh, read the latitude. Is that thirteen degrees? Yes, this thirteen one. degrees yeah. and fifteen point nine. nine. Then you like find 15, fifteen is here. Fifteen, so it's gonna be almost here. Somewhere, somewhere, no, somewhere here. here. There are two different kind of cadets. There is engine cadet and a deck cadet. But fortunately, me and Mark, we are both decadent, so we are always working together to see the navigation system, if everything works properly. We can see our, ourselves mm -hmm. and... Uh, they are going to teach us how to deal with those maritime equipment, like GPS and, and the radar, so that in the future time, in two years, we are going to go back to Cape Town to get our license. <laughs> then we are going to come back as a junior officer. And in maybe seven years or eight years, we are going to be ready to become a captain. Even though the captain looks like the most relaxed person on the boat, he actually has a lot of responsibility. And if it happens anything on the vessel, you're going to be the responsible. So it's really very tough and very difficult to be a captain. For me, the best thing about working on ship is that we are going to know different kind of person because we can go from South Africa to Brazil to the United States. So that's going to be wonderful. We are going to make the world. Mas olha aqui, é que tu consegues ter um ar fresco e... Yeah. Tu consegues respirar. Tu consegues, ter, é, tu consegues ter encontro com a natureza para além de, de ter um trabalho muito, muito cauteloso, cuidadoso. Tu tens, tu tens em contato com o ambiente. Nessa situação. Mesmo também nesse ambiente, se tivermos se tiver problemas aí em casa, problemas familiares, mas acho que aqui com esse ambiente você está a esquecer por algum tempo. Tu yeah. consegues tipo, consciencializar ver as yeah. coisas e enfim. Uma beleza, coisa bonita, uma beleza, uma beleza. Como para libertar sua mente. Sim, para libertar sua mente. Just repeat o inglês que você Meu nome é Thelma Silva. Eu trabalho para Merce Klein Angola and I'm the HR manager. I've been working for Maersk for almost 13 years, and over this period, I have witnessed a lot of projects for which the main focus has been developing people. Especially the cadet programs that we have in the group, they give opportunities to young men that, um, let's say, in a different setup would never have uh, such exposure or such opportunity. They know that it's a long journey. It's not something that uh, in three years or five years they will become captain. It's definitely a long journey, but uh, it's something that they can actually aspire to. We're not only supporting local talent, but uh, that also contributes to our economy as well. So we support our local laws that have to do with the Angolanization. So by developing our local young talents, that means that we're doing our contribution as a company to meet the local regulations as well. I think it's an absolute must, uh, not only for this continent, for the world, that you make sure your youth is upskilled and trained. Especially in Africa, actually, you can have big dreams because with the rapid growth on this continent, you actually probably have the best opportunity to make your dreams come true. So I think it's a great place to be. This is Africa's time, as we say right now. And I've actually ended up working with a continent that I love and I think has great prospects in the future. I feel like a successful guy, but it was not easy. I had to struggle a lot, a lot of difficulty. I had to be away from my family and the people that I love, but it has to be. When you look to the Luanda Bay and you look to those big vessels from Mars, for me, that's really very good because the economy is growing and uh, I'm part of that, you know, I'm going to work on one of those vessels. Just knowing that is really wonderful for me and I feel proud of myself. I feel proud of serving my country and help my country to develop.